Hello there. Greetings, everyone. This is Jed Schlackman. I'm a holistic counselor and spiritual energy healer. In this video on the topic of holistic health, I'll be sharing about a somewhat potent herbal remedy. So before I go into that, I'm just going to share this quick disclaimer that this video is for educational purposes. So it's not intended to diagnose or treat for your medical conditions. So if you are looking for professional healing support, you can certainly seek out the care of a qualified healthcare practitioner for that purpose. This video is just for educational information and you're responsible for how you use this information. So now to proceed, this video is about a particular herbal remedy called cystis and canis. This is often called cystis tea since people use this herb in a tea and it's an herbal remedy that has powerful antiviral and antibacterial antipathogen types of properties. This plant is part of the rock rose family, so it's a type of bush that grows primarily in the Mediterranean region. And it's something that has been recommended by Dr. Dietrich Klinkhart, who uses it in his protocols to help people address a variety of health concerns. He works a lot with people that have neurological conditions, things like autism, and also people that have autoimmune or chronic types of illnesses. So infections are often a significant part of those conditions. And the properties of the cystis and canis are are really exceptional in their ability to help a person's immune system overcome all kinds of infections. So I'm going to share with you some research that you can find on PubMed. This is research that's been done looking at how this particular herb works with treating specific types of infections. So we're going to look at a few of these now. So the first study, this one is titled A Polyphenol Rich Plant Extract, Cystu052, that's spelled C-Y-S-T-U-S-052, so Cystus052 exerts anti-influenza virus activity in cell culture without toxic side effects or the tendency to induce viral resistance. This is from the Institute of Molecular Virology that's located in Munster, Germany and it was published in the journal Antiviral Research in 2007. And here's the summary abstract of this study. Infections with influenza A viruses still pose a major threat to humans and several animal species. The occurrence of highly pathogenic avian influenza viruses of the H5N1 subtype capable to infect and kill humans highlights the urgent need for new and efficient countermeasures against this viral disease. Here we demonstrate that a polyphenol-rich extract, which is the Cystus 052, from the Mediterranean plant Cystus and Canis, exerts a potent anti-influenza virus activity in A549 or MDCK cell cultures infected with prototype avian and human influenza strains of different subtypes. 
Cystocell 5 2 treatment resulted in a reduction of progeny virus titers of up to 2 logs at the effective dose of 50 micrograms per milliliter. The extract did not exhibit apparent harming effects on cell viability, metabolism, or proliferation, which is consistent with the fact that these plant extracts are already used in traditional medicine in Southern Europe for centuries without any reported complications. Viruses did not develop resistance to cystocell 5 2 when compared to amantadine that resulted in the generation of resistant variants after only a few passages. On a molecular basis, the protective effect of cystocell 5 2 appears to be mainly due to binding of the polymeric polyphenol components of the extract to the virus surface, thereby inhibiting binding of the hemagglutinin to cellular receptors. Thus, a, a local application of cystoso 5 2 at the viral entry routes may be a promising approach that may help to protect from influenza virus infections. So that's the study looking at the effect on influenza. Let's come to another study now. And this one looks at the potent in vitro antiviral activity of cystis and canis extract against HIV and filoviruses. So in this study, the abstract reports that novel therapeutic options are urgently needed to improve global treatment of virus infections. Herbal products with confirmed clinical safety features are attractive starting material for the identification of new antiviral activities. Here we demonstrate that cystis and canis herbal products inhibit human immunodeficiency virus infections in vitro. The cystis and canis extract inhibited clinical HIV-1 and HIV-2 isolates, and importantly, a virus isolate with multiple drug resistances, confirming broad anti-HIV activity. Antiviral activity was highly selective for virus particles, preventing primary attachment of the virus to the cell surface and viral envelope proteins from binding to heparin. Bioassay guided fractionation indicated that cystis and canis extract contains numerous antiviral compounds and therefore has favorably low propensity to induce virus resistance. Indeed, no resistant viruses emerged during 24 weeks of continuous propagation of the virus in the presence of cystis and canis extracts. Finally, cystis and canis extracts also inhibited infection by virus particles pseudotyped with Ebola and Marburg virus envelope proteins, indicating the antiviral activity of cystis and canis extract extends to emerging viral pathogens. These results demonstrate that cystis and canis extracts show potent and broad in vitro antiviral activity against viruses that cause life-threatening diseases in humans and are promising sources of agents that target virus particles. So that's a pretty significant study there, um, looking at the effect on the retrovirus HIV and that was published in the journal Scientific Reports in 2016. So we're going to look at one more study. And this one is the polyphenolic composition of cystis and canis herbal tea and its antibacterial and anti-adherent activity against streptococcus mutans.
and this study was in the journal Planta Medica in 2015. The Mediterranean plant Cystus incanus is rich in polyphenols and has shown several pharmacological activities, mainly antibacterial effects. Furthermore, in situ studies revealed that Cystus incanus infusion reduces the initial bacterial adhesion in the oral cavity due to the polyphenols, an indication that Cystus incanus might reduce the risk of caries disease, i.e. dental cavities. In the present study, the polyphenols from four different commercial Cystus incanus herbal teas were extracted by standardized accelerated solvent extraction for in vitro tests and by an infusion for in situ tests. Both extracts were characterized qualitatively and quantitatively by high performance liquid chromatography and only the polyphenol content differed slightly. By means of diode array detection and mass spectrometry, 29 polyphenols including elagotannins, flavanols, and glycosylated flavanols were identified. Thereby, only quantitative but no qualitative differences between the four samples were detected. Furthermore, the in vitro antibacterial activity of the cystis and canis accelerated solvent extracts against streptococcus mutans one of the primary karyogenic bacterial species was examined using a live slash dead assay. With this approach, Cystis and Canis yielded antibacterial properties. Additional in situ experiments indicated that rinses with the Cystis and Canis infusion reduced the initial bacterial colonization of enamel samples exposed to oral fluids for over eight hours. Furthermore, it was shown by transmission electron microscopy that the application of a cystis and canis infusion modifies the ultrastructure of the acquired enamel pellicle, yielding a more electron-dense morphology. It can be assumed that the polyphenols are responsible for the observed effects. So there it's showing that this herbal infusion was very good at um, blocking bacterial activity in the mouth affecting the teeth. So we can see that there are multiple potential uses and applications for this herbal remedy. And this is something that grows naturally. So people have indeed been using it for many years and it hasn't produced any serious adverse complications. So it's, as far as anyone could tell, this point something that's relatively safe. Consider that in comparison to many of the medications that pharmaceutical companies create for antibacterial or antiviral effects. Many of those have some serious potential adverse effects. So if you're struggling with any health challenges, whether it's acute infections or some chronic disease conditions, <clears throat> it's often very valuable to address these pathogens that are in your body. Some of them are stealth pathogens, ones that in some way hide or cloak themselves so that it's hard for your immune system to recognize and remove them. And this particular remedy may help address some of those types of pathogens. I appreciate you for taking your time to view this video, for seeking to learn more about health and wellness, seeking to improve your own well-being, for those that are interested in holistic health, spirituality, and related subjects, I invite you to view some more of my videos. You can also visit my website, 
which is phinsights.com. That's p h i n s i g h t s dot c o m. For now, I would like to wish everyone a wonderful day. Namaste.